Installing the H9291 cutter head. Step one, remove the protective waxy oil coating from the H9291 cutter head, if there is any, with a solvent cleaner or degreaser, such as the one shown in accessories on page nine. Avoid chlorine, chlorine is what it says, chlorine. I don't know if they mean chlorine. Chlorine-based solvents such as acetone or brake parts cleaner that may damage painted surfaces. Maybe they don't mean chlorine there. Always follow the manufacturer's instructions when using any type of cleaning product. I don't think that my carbide head has really any gunk on it, so I'm not gonna worry about it. Jointer carbide inserts are extremely sharp. Wear leather gloves to avoid the risk of serious personal injury during the following steps. They're not as sharp as tool steel, I'll tell you that right now, but they are they are sharp, so I'll probably put some gloves on. Step number two, slide the rear bearing block as far as possible onto the longer length of the cutter head shaft as shown in figure 15. Step number three, stand the cutter head upright between two eight inch two by four blocks, rear bearing block side down and use a hammer and a, wooden, and a wood block to seat the cutter head into the rear bearing block as shown in figure 16. Tap the wood block on the cutter head until it meets resistance. You can also use an arbor press to reinstall the rear bearing block. So let's try it with a hammer. Grab some gloves. Handy dandy Harbor Freight welding gloves. Out with the old and in with the new. I really don't want to chip any of these, so I'm gonna be very, very gentle with it. Slide the rear bearing block as far as possible onto the longer length of the cutter shaft head. And the rear one is this one, and this is the rear shaft. So up we go. Wouldn't it be funny if it didn't fit? That would be hilarious. I would just laugh and laugh. Marring up my table. It goes in there, it's just, it's not an easy fit, but it does go. It's gotta go further than that. There we go. I think that worked. Yeah, it's starting to move. Just needs a little more persuasion. There we go. Starting to go into the table a little bit. I think that might be seated. Not sure. I don't remember how far on it was last time. Hmm. Seems like it needs to go on further than that to me. Whoa. Yeah, needs to go on further. Okay. That's what I thought. I think that needs to seat all the way down to that part. It seems kind of like it met with some resistance. Could just be my shitty hammering skills though. I think I'm just gonna press it the rest of the way on. So as far as I can tell, I need to pretty much eliminate this gap right here. So why didn't I do this earlier? It's so much easier than hitting it with a hammer. Probably better for the workpiece too. That's almost it. Oh, I think that's it. See if that fits on there. I think maybe the screw plate on the end can be used to seat that completely. We'll see if that's not on there all the way. <clears throat> Feels like maybe it's not. 
but I think the screw plate on the end can seat it completely. This one's going on much easier. Use a hammer and a scrap piece of wood to seat the front bearing block onto the cutter head shaft. Tap the front bearing block until it meets resistance. Secure the front bearing block with the hex bolt and flat washer removed in step 25 on page five. Then reinstall the cap with the three cap screws. Now, I assume that this part is designed to actually draw the piece up into the body, which is good. That'll seat the bearings just so. I don't hate that bearing cap. It seems like kind of a good design, kind of self, self-setting there. I don't really feel any play in the bearing either. Seems like they're still good. I've only used them for like a year, so I've had it for two years, but it was just sitting for a year because I got tired of sharpening the blades. Place the cutter head on, the, on a bench, slide the key into the keyway, push the pulley onto the cutter head shaft, then secure the pulley with the left-hand thread hex bolt and flat washer removed in step 21 on page four. Okay, so that's gonna draw it tight on the other side. <coughs> Key's already in there. And this bolt will draw the pulley and the other bearing assembly tight, hopefully. Assuming I can get it to bite. Not really thrilled about using my thumb and my gloves to brace this. Perhaps a piece of wood will help. <laughs> Does not seem to. This one's a little more dangerous than the last one was. Let me get that rag. Maybe I can grip it with the rag. Just put an extra layer between my gloves and the blades. And again, maybe that's it. Maybe we're done. Is that on there? No? It looks like it can tighten down a little more. Looks like I should have kept going with the press. Hydraulic press. But it's just not a great way to grip that. <laughs> with a rag, wipe down the part of the casting where the bearing blocks will rest to remove any built up debris or grime. Step eight, move the cutter head to the jointer. Using the mark from step 18, install the cutter head so the front bearing block is positioned at the front of the machine. Be careful not to chip the carbide inserts on the jointer beds. Maybe if I use the strap wrench on this part, just really don't want to get over to the jointer and realize that I screwed up. <laughs> that will ruin my day. This might actually be the intended design use case for the strap wrench. It seems like that's pretty tight. I've had this strap wrench for years and I've Always tried using it in projects, but it never quite worked out. Yeah, it's not really moving past that last bit, so I think it's on there. I think that's it. I'm just gonna tighten this down, and then I think we're ready to install. Yay! Being careful not to chip the carbide, they say. Ugh. Watch, that'll be the first thing I do. I'm just gonna chip a big old huge chunk out of the carbide. Probably because I tripped getting back there. Jesus, how the hell do you not chip the carbide? Ugh. Son of a bitch. Uh. Mm. <laughs> uh. Yeah. 
Something's getting chipped. This is ridiculously heavy. Ooh. Get in there. Oh yeah. There we go. Whew. Damn. That was a lot of work. All right, let's see if anything's chipped. Those look okay. Those look okay. Those look okay. I think I might have done it. Okay, so the question is, do the bolts reinstall properly? That's the question. I don't remember what I did with the bolts either. It's probably this guy. Seems like it's threading in. Holy crap. I'm starting to think maybe I can do this. What about this one? Wow. That's cool. These are left hand threads. Keeps freaking me out. Oh man, I'm so stoked. This is awesome. This Shelix cutter head is gonna be so, so freaking badass. It's gonna be ridiculous. All right, I'm gonna tighten up some of the ones on the back now. It's gonna be ridiculous. Man, that's sexy. Okay. Holy shit, it's in there. Oh man. Oh man. Things are starting to happen. They're starting to come together. Oh man. Step number nine, secure the hutter, cutter head assembly bearing blocks to the casting with the hex bolts and lock washers removed in step 17 in the assembly section on page four as shown in figure 19. We have done that. Step number 10, reinstall any gaskets that were knocked off earlier on the bottom of the base. Oh man, this is the part that I hate. This is the part where we lower the jointer back onto the casting or back onto the steel base. All right, I think I'm gonna sleep. I'm gonna watch some TV and I'm gonna sleep and I will come back to this odious task later. <laughs>